Uh, hello and welcome to Turnbuckle Tea Talk. You're joined by me, John Duggan, and the guy with his hair growing, Kieran Kipler. How you doing, mate? I'm good. My head's cold. <laughs> I can imagine. So, um, uh, as just a quick introduction to this. This is um, something a bit different from our usual podcast where we talk about wrestling. It does come up in conversation, but it always does anyway. Yeah. Uh, so what we do is we have a cup of tea, have a chat, and we have no idea where it's going to go. Um, so if you've not got a cup of tea yet, go make one. Well, uh, our poor man, he's back again. <laughs> have we had any names sent in? Yes, we had. Um, I can't remember it now. Um, but it was like, it's quite too hot, but it was... Um, <laughs> Was it, uh, was it too cool? Yes, yes, that's the one. It kind of works. I had a better one, I think. What was your... uh, Cesaro. Cesaro, yes. yeah. I'm sure you're like Cesaro. Yeah, I do like that. Um, I forgot to spin it again. Uh, yeah, if anyone else can think of better than Cesaro, I think I like, we'll do when I stays on. I will like Schwarzenegger. Yeah, it's got to be a wrestling name, Kieran. Does it though? Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Schwarzenegger was in WWE. Mm. Um, now, uh, it's been a bit of a hectic day today, you know. Yeah. So um, I've gone with a different cup. Mm. Gone for, you know, something that demands more. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Your water bill will be high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to have one of them but I dropped it and broke the floor um, brilliant <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got my Steve Austin one today as yep. featured in the interview with Radse still available to watch he <laughs> likes it didn't he, he likes your mug mm. so just something quick about these mugs Go on. These these aren't reproductions these are the original WWF mugs from the year 2000. Do you know what? Tell me about it. Tell me that about <laughs> five million times. Um, I've got a rock one somewhere as well. I don't know where it is. Mm-hmm. So it's a little uh, vintage vintage mug. I haven't got a teapot yet, though. Um, right. Conversation for today. I was listening to a song on the radio. Oh. And right. I, was, I was belting it out in my kitchen. And I thought, what a song. And I realised it was too moving. And it's one of them songs that you forget. It's like a part of a, you know, a movie soundtrack. Right. So this song I was listening to was... Um, and the song was... All Saints. Oh, The Beach. The Beach, yeah. So the song was Pure Shores mm. from the film The Beach, which is a fantastic film. I love that film. That's a great soundtrack as well. Oh, yeah. But I was just, I was like, belting out, you know, singing. I was just like, what a song. And then I got thinking, there's probably a lot of songs to movie soundtracks that you don't, that you forget about. Like a big one people forget about is um, Seal, Kiss from a Rose, mm-hmm. which is from Batman Forever. Yeah. I remember That's the a, music video for that. Yeah. Like another one is um, Dramiroquai. I'm going deep. Uh, yeah, remember the video for that as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite soundtrack song? You know, what? I'm a I'm a sucker right for Back to the Future, but not the power um, power of love. Which one? Uh, um, back in time. Back in time is a good one. It's better than the um, Power of Love. Yeah, I do like the Power of Love. Um, I'm trying to think of mine. Do, do, do you know what does have a good, great, uh, a good soundtrack? Go on. Um, ten things I hate about you. Oh yeah. That's a great film, though. I love that film. Yeah. 
Speaking of which, another one that you forget about has a, an unbelievable soundtrack is Crown Tensions. They have a um, uh, bit sweet symphony. Mm -mm. You know the end where he gets um, he gets run over, and then the you know the, it kind of starts to uh, unfold unfold. Yeah. Um, I don't know what word you're trying to say. Unfold. Unfold. And it starts to unfold, um, you know, about <laughs> the main character and the drugs. Yeah, it plays that song. Mm. And Do you know what? I had good soundtracks, and I think it sort of moulded my teenage years of listening to music, is uh, the American Pie films. They're yeah. always them sort of teenage, rocky songs, weren't they? You know, like some 41 yeah, yeah. and... Yeah. Mm. One of my favourites from that is, um, I think, when it too Mutt. Mm, I don't know that one. You, you will if you if you heard it. It's got such a like a classic. It's on like I think it's on most American Pie films. Uh, probably heard it, not realise what the name of it is. He's on. Um, no, I like. I'm not gonna. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> no, Sing as well. We know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, American Pie films. Um, milf. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Rocky's got one of the best soundtracks, hasn't it? Yeah. Now, I found a fact out the other day. So, you know, Eye of the Tiger? Yeah. Was on Rocky Free. Okay, yeah. It was written, actually written for the film. Because the original song they wanted to use, they weren't allowed to get permission for. Another one bites the dust. Yeah. Yeah. So, the ver the version you hear on the film is the demo version of it, which is different from what you hear on like the radio or the thing, because it was okay. it's that light new. Yeah, I know. I can't imagine another one bites the dust in that film. It'd be weird, wouldn't it? See, whenever I hear, I think about another one bites the dust. <laughs> Do you know what comes to my mind? Glad he is. Gladiators, <laughs> another from finger. Yeah. <laughs> Enough, I'm bad to dust. Mm -hmm. Strangely as well, actually, secondly comes to my mind is Small Soldiers. Another good film. Is, is that the, on that, is it? Yeah, it's on the battle scene. Mm. No, it's not. Sorry, no, it's in the garage where they're all getting modified into the new, <laughs> you know, into the new toys. Yeah. It's been a while since I watched Small Soldiers. It's a good film, though, isn't it? It is a good film. Now, I want to I talk to you, well, to our audience about a conversation me and John had this week. So, John says, have you seen The Room? The Room. I don't think so. What is it? If you need to watch it, it's on YouTube. That should have been my first giveaway. If a film is on YouTube <laughs> in full, you know what I mean? It, um, so I was like, right, okay, I'll watch it. I started watching it, I thought, what the bloody hell is this? And then John, later, later on in the film, says to me that it's actually known around the world as the worst film ever made. Mm. <laughs> um, and you said it, the guy who was in it, directed it, starred in it, produced it, whatever... He yeah. spent six million on it. That they can gather, it may be more. Right, before I get into the budget. Do, do what, right, first off, I think it's a great film. It's unintentionally funny, which but is the always thing good. Is, right, <laughs> first, um, so they've made a movie about the movie, which is, um, mm. what, what is it called? <laughs> The movie about it is called The Disaster Artist. Yeah, and it's got James Franco in it, it's got Seth Rogen, those are big stars. So this there's an interview with Seth Rogen, and he said that um, Paul Rudd introduced him to it, and he said that it was so bad that he had to make a movie about it. Mm. And Seth Rogen is like, was saying, he's watched it so many times, he actually kind of likes it. Mm. I'm the same. And... Like, because people watch it so many times, but it's so terrible, it's kind of got this weird cult following, apparently. Yeah. So, how I came across it is, like, I listen to podcasts all the time. There's a podcast I listen to called 
how did how did this get made? Right. And you know me, I love like obscure films. Mm. So they talk about really bad, ma- badly made films. But there'll be films on it that you've heard of. So there's stuff like that was on it. But there's stuff. There'll be stuff like Cats. They'll do like recent films as well. And Cats is terrible. Cats is a terrible film. Don't even go there. <laughs> do you know they went to cat school? Cats to learn how- <laughs> to- No, but they went to 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 learn how cats move, which. To me, it seems a waste of time because they don't move like cats. They don't move like humans either. <laughs> it's so bad. That is one of the worst films I've ever seen. Because and to the point, it has so many people in it. The names in that movie yeah. are ridiculous. But it's all it's made really badly because the perspective's all wrong. What size are these cats? <laughs> one, I just don't understand. The one they're like balancing on the railway. The next thing they're bigger than Nelson's column. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so they do that. So they do. They'll they'll talk about films. And so I've I've listened to every episode because there's some films like I said that I've seen. But so they did the room. But they were talking about the room. So they have the guy, the guy that's in the room that plays Mark. Um, he he came on after they'd done it as like an interview about it and it's hearing him talk about it and this Tommy, I think it's called Tommy Wizzer, Wizzer, Wiser I don't know how you say his name it just sounds so interesting so I was like right I've got to watch this film so <laughs> I used to walk home from work I said to Frey I went right I want to watch this film it's meant to be really terrible she's like why are we watching it I went Shh. It's just let's watch it and see what it's like. And we started watching it, it's just like, this is terrible. <laughs> and I went, this song cost six million dollars to make. <laughs> and we've watched that a few times. <laughs> but we quote so, it, so Oh hi Mark. <laughs> right, I did so, not hit her. I did not. Oh hi I'll Mark. Get in, I'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> so I've only kind of discovered this film like a day ago, so I'm very new to the f- mm. the actual um, names and stuff. But Seth Rogen, I, mean, I, was, I had to. I think. I to sorry, I think it's is. it's more famous in America than it is in Britain. I've not yeah. met anyone in Britain that's watched that. Yeah, it's very like in America. They all dress up as all the characters, and it's that kind mm. of Rocky Horror kind of cult. But yeah. Seth Rogen was saying that um, so they made this the Disaster Artist, which is, which is the movie about the movie, and I was at the premiere. And um, the guy who acted and directed it was at the premiere as well. Now, when Seth Rogen played the guy who, Stephen, something who created the computer, Seth Rogen played that, that guy in a movie. Yeah, he, he was like the um, camera guy, Seth Rogen. Yeah. yeah, so when they was at the premiere for that, the guy who made the computer was amazed. His head was blown that the movie was made about him. He was so overjoyed. Now, <laughs> in, in comparison, Seth Rogen was saying that the guy who made the the room at the premiere of the disaster artist, he was there like this. You know, like, he was like this should have been made about five years ago. But apparently, he was just so like, mm-hmm. what's well, about time? <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, apparently, he's a bizarre man. Um, yeah. No one. Well, there's a few things with him. No one really knows where he's from. It's, yeah, it sounds kind of like Russian, but then he goes into like a German accent as well. Yeah, no one knows how he's got all this money. Like, there's a scene I've just been, I've watched this disaster artist just before we came on, just to like re remember facts about it. And so the cameraman, there's a scene in it, the cameraman goes to the bank to cash his paycheck in because he doesn't believe like he's going to get paid for doing this film. And the bank teller tells him, like, he, he pays him and, he, and the guy's like, oh my God, I'm actually getting paid for this. I didn't believe it because he's ready to leave the film. And the bank tells that I'll not meant to tell you this, but this bank account is like, it's like a bottomless pit. There's a lot of money in this account. Huh. So no one knows where he's got this money from. Right. So, so there's, let's go. Oh, go on. <laughs> I was going to say, I can tell you how he spent six million quid on a lot of things. Right. Well, let's just, Let's go on about, let's talk about the actual movie first, right? Because and right. I, I noticed a few things. Like everything you got taught around school. 
this didn't happen. There was no conviction in what he was saying. <laughs> Con considering he directed and wrote it, he said his lines like he had no idea what he was saying. Yeah. There's Just... a scene where the, the camera's panning across and the the song, the actual song in the background, skips. <laughs> and then the music skips. Um, now, I was on YouTube and obviously my daughter goes on YouTube, so I think it has like a, a, a parental guidance, whatever. So mm. it appeared, like there was a scene where I was taking the clothes off and then it went all blurry. Right. For about a minute. So I'm guessing it, it like it blurred the sex scene out. Um... That's what happened on my YouTube because it every time the swab as well, it kind of beats as well. Right. Um, I mean, I'm lucky I didn't get the sex scene because if that, I mean, can you imagine how awful that would have been? So the sex scene's really awkward. I, because, yeah, I can imagine. Um, and it's in the disaster artist. Not to be too graphic with it, but he's he's doing it to her like um her belly button. He's not in the right position. <laughs> Right. And they, they only show the one sex scene, but they show it twice in different parts of the film. Oh, do they? <laughs> and it's the exact same scene. It's like it's like a college movie. Yeah. Um, and like so, this but, this guy, the but main it's, guy. It's getting, <laughs> there's a thing where every scene, a character will say who's in the scene. So, be like, oh hi Mark, yeah. hi Danny. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, hi Lisa <laughs> he says it all the same oh hi Mark yeah now bizarre. there's a rooftop scene in this which is particularly bizarre uh, <laughs> right so yeah. the young kid um, owes some guy some drugs and he threatens him and the guy who bullies him walk, you know, walks out walks down never mentioned again stairs. that was never, never mentioned again and then <laughs> The kid's mum and grandmother and friends just appear suddenly, just behind his... No, friend. that's not his grandmother. He's not related to them in any way. <laughs> that's Lisa's mum. Right. They, Lisa's mum has never met that guy. And he, he, swear, he shouts at him. He goes, you're not my fucking mother like that. And it's like, <laughs> you don't even know her. Because she, she hasn't got him about doing drugs. <laughs> I just assumed it was his <laughs> No, no, that's Lisa's mum. Right. Okay. Anyway, that's bizarre. <laughs> and then, so they're on an actual rooftop, a real rooftop. But for some reason, they've used a green screen. Yeah. Can you can you explain? Also, that? also there's scenes in an alley, and they had an alley outside the studio, but they remade an alley. <laughs> That's just no. so, <laughs> another thing. Um, apparently, they had a massive, like you know, them big American billboards. The yeah, like, above the, the uh, yeah. It's and, a, um, paid for that for years so, as well. Yeah, it was on for like, years, and it had you know the movie WW. <laughs> they had the movie uh, website, um, and then it had his phone number at the top. And apparently, mm. it was just the guy who directed it phone number. <laughs> Smart, so people think. ring him up and they go, oh, hi, are you coming to the movie? And you just talk to him about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just bizarre, isn't it? So, like, I feel like I do need to watch it again because the first time I was just so shocked. I was like, why is John, why am I watching this? Now it's I so bad. Now it's... I understand. It's terrible. I can watch it with a different perspective. Right. So there's a few things you touched on that I'll go into now. So the not reacting to what's said on the scene just baffles me because it's not just them that does it. It's other characters Blank. as well. So there's a scene where the one new youth father's grandmother yeah. is telling her daughter she's got cancer and the daughter just goes, oh, well, anyway, I never mentioned again. <laughs> um, there's the... The scene where he's saying, oh, I didn't hit her, I didn't hit her, and then he just goes, oh, hi, Mark. Um, there's a scene where Mark is telling him a story about a woman that got beat up, and he's yeah. laughing. He's just laughing, going, oh, you tell the funniest stories. Like, it's bizarre. It doesn't make any if, sense. If you're going to make a movie and you want to be a, a proper director, you must have gone to some kind of drama school, even if it was, like, you know, at the village hall. 
And yeah. you, you, you know, you get, you get taught basics. One, react. <laughs> like, mm. it just, this basics just gone out the window. So as well, that high mark scene took, like, hundreds of takes. I believe so. I've seen a, a little bit of the disaster artist and the, you kept looking out going, what line is it? Yeah, what is line? <laughs> oh, hi, it's, just, Mark. it's bizarre, isn't it? Very bizarre. Um, but I find it's so There's a lot of weird that... things as well. Like, so, like you said about the screenings, people go to it and it's a bit like the Rocky Horror thing. So in some scenes, there's pictures in the background and they're pictures of spoons for some reason. So whenever they're on, they come on the screen, people will throw plastic spins at the screen. <laughs> Just as a weird thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it made five million, considering it cost six million. Right, okay. But, but it's probably made more than that now with like the rights to stuff and people buying it. Well, they're but, still saying that um, this guy wanted to be a proper actor and a proper director and now he kind of is I mean he's a bit well, mature, yeah. but he is, he's how he's directing other films so the reason it costs so much money <laughs> so one of the things he did so usually when you make a film the studio would hire all the equipment so like the lighting the cameras because one they're massively expensive and they go out of date because it's always updated all the time Right. So it's in the disaster arts as well. So he goes into this like rent cameras and stuff. And well, that's the thing. So he shot this in HD and on, on film at the same time. So he had two cameras on each scene, which cost a lot of money. But also he bought all the equipment. Then the people are like, no, no, that's not what people do. They just rent it because it's massively expensive and he's just like no no i want to buy them so he bought all the equipment so he bought all the cameras and everything to make this film but it's, it's just bizarre no one else it's a weird guy isn't he <laughs> yeah the, the flower there's a flower shop scene that's probably my favorite scene because oh hi it's, it's been dog. it's been <laughs> it's been dubbed as well so he's added in lines but he comes in and so he comes in and the woman goes, oh, sorry, I didn't recognise you. And then as he's leaving, he goes, you're my favourite customer. And he's, <laughs> he's in and out. It's like a 10 second scene. I just don't, this, uh, the plot just makes no sense to me. The drug dealer bear, I've no idea why that happened. Yeah. So you said that after filming, they weren't happy with some of the, the lines. So they, <laughs> so they dubbed him over. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds so bizarre. You have to see it to believe it. Because it's not just bad and, like, oh, like, it's bad, but this person's good, this person's good. Even, like, the proper actors are pretty bad at acting. So, you know, like, around, especially around Christmas, you get them Channel 5, Channel 4 movies that are, like, right. low budget. They're bad movies. But this, remi this reminds me of, have you ever watched true movies? Yes. It's like that, but worse. Yeah, but, yeah, but, True movies, like, this is just on another level, isn't it? Yeah, it's just crazy. But it's worth a watch. I'd go out and watch it. Yeah. Just remember that it is absolutely terrible, and then you might enjoy it. It's just the acting, in it? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Are you glad you watched that then? See, I had to tell you it was bad. I was going to just let you watch it, but I know you wouldn't have got past the first scene. No. Without now knowing I, that it's now I know bad. That it's, now I know that's really, really terrible. I can watch it with a new perspective. <laughs> yeah. What's the worst film you've ever seen? That. Apart from that. Before that. <laughs> um, Zoolander 2. It's going to be up there. Uh, I remember you saying that. Oh, so bad, and the first one was so good. I thought can't be that bad. Mm. I've not seen it yet, but yeah, it's, I like, it's not good. I'm a big fan of the room. I think it, I want a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Even the like the title doesn't make any sense. What room? 
There's no All right. Also, have you got to the part where there's just a random couple and he's fat? Yeah. What is that scene? <laughs> These facial expressions, did it show that fat? At that point, I, I can't <laughs> yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, yeah. I don't know. I liked it. I like um, sort of like really bad kind of kung fu movies and, you know... They're, they're yeah, but funny. they're not that bad. You get a good good action in a comic film. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I love it. You watched End of the Dragon. It's got yeah. one of the best films ever, on it? I don't know. I... I really like some of the Jackie Chan films, like the early ones. Mm. Like um, um, Jackie Chan's First Strike, that's really good. Yeah. Is that the one, really... what, what's the one with the scene with the ladders? And he's like... Yes, yeah, that's it, Jackie Chan's First yeah. Strike. What I a scene. Remember what it called. I know when it's, it's him doing it, that's what amazes it. I know. Watching the minute. And then I think it's... Mr. Nice Guy, um, he jumps across like these two, like well, these two platforms, and he breaks his leg. He snaps his ankle, so he wears a cast. But the cast is in the shape of oh, well, the the cast is like painted like his shoe. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's Not on the outtakes. Uh -huh. I mean, I like the Rush Hour films as well. Yeah. Yeah, you don't. They don't really make films like that now. I don't think. Um, no. <laughs> Tell you what is a great film which I watched recently and I hadn't seen it in a long time before that. Tango and Cash. Never seen that, you know. Oh, you never seen that? It's a, is that it's, Sylvester Stallone in that? Yes, um, and God, I'm asking it, but um. So they get um, framed and they get put in prison, mm. and it's them escaping. And um, yeah, it's really, it's really good. Do you know what Sylvester film, Sylvester Stallone film that gets like proper, like saying it's one of the worst films ever? But I quite like it, and it's because it's always shown on British TV. But I don't think it is in, like America. Have you ever seen Stop or My Mum Will Shoot? Oh my god, I love <laughs> that film. <laughs> I absolutely love that film. It's like, it's, yeah. No, it's not I love it. Film. It's a great film. When she's buying yeah. guns off that dodgy dealer. Yeah, that big, that big <laughs> guy. She smacks him over the head with a pan. Yeah. What a great granny. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that film. I don't think it was that bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, also a bit watching. Did you watch The Masked Singer? What do you think of it? I said Josh Stone in like week two and then I kind of I didn't follow it up um, mm. I did say Josh Stone I remember her having a husky voice when she sang though her voice has changed I feel mm. but yeah I it's good I enjoyed the singer the masked dancer's coming yeah that should be interesting mm. like how are you going to know who's that dancing it, it just baffles me you did you know with a voice? Did you know who Badger was? I guess Badger once I heard him sing on the final. Uh, Badger was. Who was Badger? It was Neo. 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 Oh, I think yeah. If they said Neo, I know I've bought you bought that. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Neo. 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 <laughs> Neo. Sorry, it's a Neo. <laughs> hey. Um. Again, I think every episode we've gone on to wrestling, but we need to we need to bring something up because exciting times are happening for you, Kieran. Your man, Seamus, not Seamus. Wow, <laughs> come on, now. is it because I'm ginger? <laughs> Your man, um, Cesaro, Cesaro, is in a main event. What's going he on? Is. No pre-show. Maybe. This is it. This is Cesaro's chance to win the belt. This is his chance to get up the ranking. <laughs> so this is, so his match is in, you win that to then have a title shot. That's what's happening, isn't it? Yeah. Right after the mm -hmm. match. 
Mm. How do you feel about Scalia? If it, even if Cesaro won the ta- won to go to the title match and then didn't win the title, I'd still be quite I'd still be proud of him. I mean, he's, yeah, he's, he's made his way up. I mean, it's a start. I think, guessing wise, I would say it's going to be Uso wins it. My guesstimation. Mm. And then she just lies down and lets Roman win. You know, do that sort of heel. Oh, do you like, oh, God, That I was really, I, I sort of, uh, I'd love it if Daniel Bryan or Cesaro won. If Cesaro won it, I would cream my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this day for so long. <laughs> um, the other match, the reckon. It's Drew McIntyre, isn't it? The record is going to be Drew McIntyre against Edge at WrestleMania. So I've I reckon... just had a thought as well. Cesaro's contract ends after WrestleMania. I think. Well, I'm sure I read the other day yeah, he, he's resigned for some is more he? years. Mm. Oh, good. Okay. Well, yeah, that means that they obviously want him. There must be a reason they want him. He's got another tag team reign in him, I reckon. Yeah, but he's done tag team how many times? No, but... He is forgotten when you think of big names. Yeah, he is. I know, it's really not fair, because he, he's a good he's a good wrestler. He's just not allowed to get his personality over. <laughs> I'll see that's Sunday anyway. Um yeah. Anything else? Uh, I'll have to rejig things. Talking about disaster artists. Yeah. Um so I got my bro- I got broadband fed because I've just been on like a really slow Stone Age internet. And I've never really spoke about this on air, but like it's just everything in my house is always a problem. <laughs> so they've come, they're fed in fibre. <laughs> all they got to do is drill a hole in my wall. That's all you got to do. So he does it. He, he does the thing, checks there's no pipes, drills through my wall, hits the water pipe, floods my living yeah. room. <laughs> so now I've got a massive hole in my living room because... His pipe finder didn't work. Well, um, who did you call? Who, who would you like? Did you call Chip Douglas? <laughs> <laughs> no, so this was actually like Open Reach, which is a proper company. Um, I mean, they got it fixed, but like, I'm waiting to get the hole fixed in my wall. But... <laughs> my hole! <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Do you know what I've noticed about Workman? They all slag each other off. Plumbers don't like electricians. Electricians don't like plasterers. Plasterers don't like plumbers. No one likes anyone. <laughs> well, you know, it's um, it's like a shark tank out there. Hmm. I would make yeah, but they're all doing different jobs. It's not like honestly, the ones I've had round, they all come in and they go, "Oh, look at the state of this." <laughs> Which cowboy did this? And you're like, "Who's your mate? He recommended you." <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever had any dealings with Workman yet? Because you're renting, aren't you? Yeah. No, we, we've been. Everything, every time there's an issue, the landlord fixes it straight away. See, that's the easy life. Mm. Wait till you buy a house, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> Still, as a kid, I don't remember my mum and dad having these problems, but they probably did. It's just they didn't make it aware. I'm just crying in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to yeah. adult, adulthood. I mean, the internet's good. It's faster. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone from just behind the scenes there. It used to take me, like, the quickest to upload one of these videos would take, like, two and a half hours. <laughs> so I uploaded one after the internet got put in, and it took three minutes. Oh dear. <laughs> what was so, you on before? What? What was you on before? 
It was just normal, wasn't it? There was a little, uh, what we had was, um, you have this little door and you opened it and then we put the coal in, light the coal and that would speed up the internet. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It was slow. It was like three megabytes per second or something. And now I'm on like eight. Living the uh, past life. Then. Living the dream. Do you remember? Did you have dial up? Are you old enough for dial up? Oh god, yeah. That, that noise. Sound. <laughs> I know it's so noisy because uh, you just you couldn't secretly go on the internet, could you? Because everyone <laughs> know about it. Why would um, you want to secretly go on the internet, John? No, I mean, like, late at night, you know, on a school night, and you want to, like... Yeah, but, John, why would you secretly go on... <laughs> Britney yeah, Spears. <laughs> Britney Spears what? <laughs> hey, that's a little insight to you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> There's no Kim Marsh, then. Mate, I remember once... Here we um, go. Fasten your seatbelt. It makes us sound so old when we talk about how slow the internet used to be. But um, I'm talking before Langmire. It's that long ago. It was Napster I had. Napster, when it was, yeah. um, you don't have to pay for it. Um, <laughs> I left my computer on downloading a song and it was the Fuji singing Bohemian Rhapsody. And I lasted downloading and I went on holiday for two weeks and I came back and it hadn't finished. <laughs> <laughs> Not even joking. It was like a seven minute song. So I went away and downloaded for two weeks. Like That's horrendous. Just how it was. <laughs> My, uh, the, that, I remember that computer I had, I had 989 megabytes complete. How it used to run anything, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the RAM on it was. I think my Mega Drive had more. I just remember, like, uh, in science class, Bluetoothing a song to my mate. It wasn't just like, you know, you know, to the, you know, to him across the room. You really had to, like, touch phones. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I remember having a phone, it was infrared, and you had to do it. That's how you would do it. And it took yeah, ages. Yeah. I would not have Bluetooth on phones when I was in school. They were pipe dreams, son. <laughs> you're, not, you're not that much older than me. You're like three years older than me. No, but that's how fast it goes, isn't it? Mate, mm. my ringtones and that were, you had to put them in yourself. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I, I'd, um, I'd Pie Boy, you know, from Jackass. Yeah. <laughs> I had that for quite some time. I had, my ringtone was the next episode. Mm. But I mean that's that's a good song, but on like a little de, 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 like a little beepy noise. It was yeah. Shocking. What was your first phone? Um, oh, I think it was a Nokia 3310. And then I had <laughs> I had this brand new make, and it's meant to be the you know, like amazing make from another country or whatever. And it was the one of the worst ones I've ever, ever had. It was a Sendo. Sendo. Oh, my dad was on it then. Yeah. They were, like, they were meant to be like, you know, the greatest thing ever from, like, I don't know what country they, they originate from, but it was just terrible. <laughs> um, my first one was a Sony Ericsson. And it was like a brick. Yeah. And it was like a little, the screen was literally like a calculator. <laughs> so when you were reading messages, you had to like press buttons all the time just to read a message. Oh, yeah. it was so bad. And then after that, I had a Motorola flip-up phone, and I thought I was cool. I was like, got a flip-up phone. Um, my second one was uh, a Motorola one with Hello, orange. Motor. It's does orange doesn't exist anymore, does it? It's uh, EE. EE now is it? But it was uh, the first phone I had that you could go on the internet, and that was using WAP, which means something else, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it, again, that would take... You just check out the football scores. That's all you could do, really. It was still like a basic calculator screen. They had the radio on it. I've, that was like the coolest, because I could actually listen to music on my phone, but it was and radio now, FM. you think... Anything that you need, I mean anything, is on a mm -hmm. phone right now. Torch, maps, 
everything. Yeah. You see, you, we never could have imagined that's what would happen. <laughs> it sounds so fucking old. I remember when polyphonic ringtones came out, and now everyone yeah. was like, oh, these sound amazing. It was like, uh, it's a MIDI file, isn't it? And then I remember the, so this, like you said, this is how fast technology and phones moved. Because people were having like recordable ringtones. Yeah. That was the thing. And then so like, I remember someone having an MP3 player and he had like five songs on it. And I was, I was like, oh, that's never going to work, is it? i tell you what as well. So I was a big Offspring fan in school. So even like the music people didn't know MP3s want to kick off because on their website, you could download every song they've ever done for free as an MP3, which I did. I had them on floppy disks. <laughs> 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 um, like 20 floppy disks. I had the whole discography of Offspring. I still went out and buy the CDs because you can only listen to it on the computer. And who wants to do that? Fuck <laughs> it. I used to love it. Oh, we used to get uh, Game Boy emulators and everything on a floppy disk. Mm. How? I don't know because... They're not that big, are they? No. I don't know. Have you ever had a floppy disk? Well, yeah, but I've not had one since like '92. I've still got mine, young. you know. Ah, right. case in point, yeah. I've still got mine. I need. I want to get a floppy disk reader and see what's on them. Even have. when I was young, um, floppy disks were old. Were they? Yeah, like 92, 93, 94. Uh, everyone thinks that's the save icon. <laughs> um, I want to get a floppy disk reader and see what's on them, if there's anything from when I was in school. My, my dad bought a console, I don't know what console it was, off one of, my na- one of our neighbours, and it was an actual PC, but the games were by a floppy disk, mm. and he had um, a joystick. And we played like games like um, Paperboy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was weird. We, it was an Amstrad was my first computer, and we played golf on it. Yeah. Mm. Well, I feel old as shit. <laughs> People don't know. I mean, I've still got a Mega Drive. Yeah, but Mega Drive is like awesome. Yeah. Um. Quite. Before we go, uh, we have like six interviews you can watch. So it's six, mm-hmm. Karen. Uh, all, de- all I think they're all interesting because they're all different aspects of wrestling. So you've got someone that's a promoter slash owner, a slash wrestler. You've got an independent wrestler, women wrestler. You've got a boxer turn wrestler, and you've got a presenter, wrestler presenter. Yeah. So all different aspects of it. And I think there's some good stories in them. There's some great well stories. Watch. Yeah. Um, so they're all available on this channel. Uh, there's a few more of these where we've talked about all sorts, haven't we, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is just, like I said, it's just, this is just something away from the podcast just to maybe talk a bit of nonsense and get away from my, from my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> um. There's also episodes on gimmick matches and Survivor Series, I think was the other one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're all available. Give them a watch. If you want to send any questions, topics to talk about, tell us your first phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was your high score on Snake? Anything. God, I, I, wouldn't even, I couldn't even tell you. I used to spend hours playing Snake. <laughs> hours. But the battery never... I never remember running out of battery. Yeah, but them phones never did. They <laughs> didn't work. They weren't having 20 million apps on them. But yeah, uh, yeah. feel free to uh, like, comment and subscribe, like John said. That's a good That's a good catchphrase. That'll catch on, that, Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> Like, comment, and subscribe. There you go. Uh, send us in your old teacup names. 
Send us in co- pictures of your teapots if you've got one. Surely it's not just me. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you again soon. See you again soon. See you.